and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover, and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. We are going to be looking at some more Svelte Kit. I want to focus in, though, on the slot functionality. This, I suppose, is not specific to Svelte Kit. It is available in Svelte in general, but Svelte Kit makes use of it immediately it's one of the very first things they talk about in their documentation is having these layouts defined inside of your page directories and these layouts will automatically apply to all of the pages and you can nest them these layouts as they describe them in their documentation all contain slots well what is a slot that's what we're going to look at today i've taken the application that we put together the other day using svelte kit and I just started making some modifications and I'm going to show you now we're going to go through the rest of them together. So all I did without you guys is I created this slotted component dots felt. And all it is is a div with a class of container. Um, I set some width and margin on here and then there's a slot and it's just open slot closing slot. There's nothing else here inside of my about page. I have slotted component. I'm importing slotted component and then I have slotted component open, I have an H1 and then I've got slotted component closed and you can see what's rendering on the page behind me here is welcome to about. So what is happening here? Inside of slotted component, first let me show you something. I'm going to delete slot and I'm going to save it and you'll see that that content immediately disappears. So what is going on is that these slots, it's telling the component where to render any children that the element has. And then you also can give these backup values like this. So if, I, if you put a slot and then inside of here put some content, I am, let's just say I am a default piece of content and save that. You'll see in the background, nothing changed. But if I go to that page and I delete the content that we are passing to the slot and save it, then you can see that I am a default piece of content immediately renders in the page. Because once we get to that slotted component, it says, hey, nothing was passed in and so I need to render the default. So that's pretty cool. It's a way of providing backups. There's so, so many things that you can do with this. The next thing that we can do with it is you can give these slots names. As you imagine, there's so much that you can do here. Let's give slot one, let's call this name slot one, and then let's copy that and paste three more and call them something else. Doesn't matter what, just make sure they have unique names like this. Default piece of content for slot one. And then we'll just copy and paste this. Slot two. And slot three. And now here you can see, as soon as I hit save, I get, I, I get all three of those rendering out because nothing is being passed. And if I add some content, and save, you'll see that also doesn't render because I'm not, I'm not telling it where to go. So even though there's slots here, they're all named slots and I'm not telling the component when I'm rendering it, hey, put it in this slot or that slot. If I add slot equals slot one like that, now you can see that the content that we're passing here renders in that first slot. And we can update this. Let's do slot two and you'll see it moves down. Slot three and it moves down again. So that's pretty cool stuff, right? You can you could set this up to essentially take a prop and render your content where you want it. You also can add other stuff in here. So if you wanted to have you know, some sort of header, a generic header that is always there, 
let's just put I am always going to be rendered and save. Now you'll see that it adds this I am always going to be rendered H2 at the top and then anything else that you're doing, any default slot rendering or any content that you're passing properly that's going to render to a slot all goes without a hitch. It's all, it all renders like it's supposed to. So that's pretty cool and also really helpful. All right, so the last thing that I want to show you guys here with slots is that you can pass props both to a slotted component. And then this part's kind of weird, and I'm not entirely sure of all of the use cases for this, but you can actually pass the prop back from the slot to the calling component. The only way this is going to make sense <laughs> is to just do it. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to delete all of these out and just leave one slot, a default slot with no name at all. Up here, I'm going to make a script tag and I'm going to export let item. Okay, so now we have, uh, this is the way of getting props in Svelte if you're not familiar. So here we're exporting out this variable to use for a prop. That's basically what's going on. Now inside of page, you'll see that this is going to be complaining that we're not passing it a prop anymore or at all. And so let's do that now. Let's pass it a prop. And what we're going to pass it, we're going to pass it an item out of this items array. So let's do item equal items sub zero like that. So we didn't actually do anything with it. So I'm going to show you that now. Here I'm going to put, let's just render out like, I don't know, item dot, item dot value. Let's just do a piece at a time. So there's item dot value and you can see here in our back left corner where our browser is peeking through, uh, you see the value of one. I'm always going to be rendered one. Okay. And then where we're passing in the slot, the, ch the child for that slot, then here's Consulting Ninja. Now, if you want to do the second part of what you can do with props and slotted components and pass data from the slotted component back to the calling component, this is how you do that. So on the slot itself, inside of your slotted component, you do prop equal and then whatever it is, so let's say uh, the entire item. And then where we're calling that slotted component, in order to make use of that prop coming back, what we need to do is do a let colon prop equal, and then what we're gonna put in here is just the name of a variable. So let's call this uh, passed back. Now inside of this H1, now I can reference that prop that's being passed back. So let's do passed back dot name. And if I save this, what we're going to get is item number one, because we are passing the whole item as a prop to the component. And inside of the slotted component, we are rendering out the value of that object inside of the H2 that's always rendered. And then the slot is taking the item and passing it back to the calling component. So that's pretty crazy stuff. And then if you were going to do this with named slots, then you'd have to add the name as well. So if this was name equal to named slot like that, save that. And then inside of here, we would have to do a slot equal named slot to get that to pass back correctly. You have to have the name there as well. And then this really should get moved. So if you are going to use props with the name slots and you want to access the prop back in the calling component file, you would then move the let declaration from the parent element of the slot to the actual thing that you're slotting and you do a let prop there. 
and then we also have to make sure that you use the correct name for where you're passing that prop back inside of your slotted component file. All right, so there we have everything that you can do with a slot, although, I mean, there, there's more you could build around this basic functionality. You know, you could have certain slots styled certain ways and then be passing the things in to those named slots and do cool stuff like that. So I hope that you guys have found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to smash that notification bell. And as always, have a great day.